Let's talk toy collecting, a closet hobby. As always, let's start with a definition. A closet hobby is, as, it, as the term implies, it's something you keep in the closet. It's something you put away, you hide, you don't normally show off or display the first thing, you, first chance you get. Uh, unless you're with a fellow enthusiast, that's probably the only time you show it off. But in general circumstances, you normally don't talk about it. Let me share an anecdote. Uh, when I was a kid, my folks would always say, you know, stop buying toys. They are a waste of money. You should get something more useful like clothes or books. Besides, you already have too many toys. Now, as a grown up, uh, my wife and again, sometimes my folks would always would tell me, stop buying toys. They are a waste of money. You should get something more useful like clothes or, or books. Uh, besides, you already have too many toys. <laughs> I know, I know, it, it, it sounds funny and ridiculous, but that, it's a reality. And, you know, why is it such a closet hobby? Uh, in my experience, I mean, toy collecting is not something you start a conversation with. Like, you go to a cocktail or an office party, and you don't start a conversation, with, hey, I'm into toys. I collect a lot of Marvel, Star Wars, and... And, and Transformers and G.I. Joes and stuff like that. Uh, maybe for some of you, that's a, a, jump, a jumping point or an icebreaker. Uh, but for many people, at least in my experience out here where I live, uh, not a lot of people start with that uh, type of conversation. The only time the hobby is brought about is usually, in my experience, by accident or by chance. Like you, somebody shows you a picture on their phone and then you... So they somehow scroll upon an action figure of Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker or somebody has an Optimus Prime collection and they say, oh, hey, wait, you're a Transformers collector? Oh, you're a Star Wars fan? Oh, you're a Marvel Legends collector? And then that's when the conversation goes to the hobby. But you normally don't start with it, especially when you've met somebody for the first time. Like you're trying to sell your car or trying to buy a house and you say, uh, hey, how are you? My name is, and, 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 and nice to meet you. I'm into toys. You don't normally do that. That's why it's such a closet hobby. Now, why is it such a closet hobby? Um, maybe closet hobby is the wrong term to use. I don't mean to offend anybody or anything like that. Maybe for you, it's not such a closet hobby. But here in, in where I live, like I said, nobody talks about it the first chance they get unless they're in a hobby shop or in obvious instances. And part of the reason of that, I can, kind of, I can think of five reasons. One is shame. Uh, somebody uh, in a previous video had had mentioned about the stigma or that co toy collectors receive uh, when people find out that they're into toys. I forgot who it is. There are a couple of you guys who suggested it. Thank you very much for suggesting this topic. Shame comes from the fact that maybe society, at least society of today, despite being modern and advanced in thinking, still think that, you know, a grown man or a grown woman still playing with toys is not something... You know, a lot of people don't think it's something to be to be proud of. Uh, it's because society has put on an idea of what is normal, a stereotype of what you should be doing when you're all grown up. You should get a job, work, get a, get a family, support your family, and all that. And toys don't necessarily fit into that, unless maybe you own a toy shop or something like that. But there's that bit of shame in talking about. Uh, something like this. Um, maybe it's unintentional. Maybe it's pressure from society that maybe, you know, the society's not used to to grown people uh, playing with toys, especially for the fact that a lot of societies define toys as something for kids. Okay. The second uh, reason I could think of is most people think it's a waste of money. Uh, simply because of the utility um, of value, the lack of utility, I should say, that it has. Uh, a lot of toys cost a lot of money. Some toys are cheap, but you can't disagree that in this biz in this hobby that we have, the toys are not cheap. And a lot of people could think like, oh, you buy a $30 toy or a $50 toy. Think of how many Big Macs or, or how many fried chickens or how many shirts you could buy with that. And a lot of people, uh, for people, especially for people who are, who don't have the luxury to buy uh, toys or who have e of extra pocket money uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, people will think it's an absolute waste of money. And it's something that 
Uh, that's why a lot of people don't want to talk about it immediately because they're afraid a lot of people will say it's just a waste of money. Another thing is, like I mentioned earlier, is it's unnatural behavior. Uh, a lot of people don't understand why people go to great lengths to acquire uh, toys or action figures or collectibles. Um, most people believe that when you get a lot of money, you try to save up for a house, you know, you buy a car, you, education plans, insurance, whatever. Uh, but toys are probably at the bottom of their list. So most a lot of people think it's unnatural for people to spend their first paycheck or maybe when they get a bonus to go out to a toy store or hobby shop and pre-order these toys. Okay. Fourth reason I can think of it's a waste of time, uh, especially for parents who, you know, who've, go, who've grown um, estranged with, with a lot of their, their children simply because of a hobby that they don't understand. And they think it's a waste of time to trying to get back your childhood or trying to get to do these things when in fact you should be doing grown-up stuff. So uh, that, that kind of thing... Um, is, is inherent in society, especially in countries where a lot of people are really struggling to make income, to make a living. And they think, you know, you're going to spend you know, some extra time, you're going to toys and people just don't get it as, as you know, what, what collectors do. For us, it's not entirely a waste of time because it's release, it's a stress reliever and all sorts of things. Okay. Uh, and the last reason I can think of is uh, most of society feel that you know toys you collect it you waste a lot of time on waste a lot of time on it you won't amount to anything. Um, it's true that there are people who have made a ton of money on toys, and usually these are uh, vintage toys. When you discover a pile that a loot that hasn't been touched, Transformers, Marvel, Star Wars toys, oh my God, that are vintage and they they can or comic books. That, that, that can fetch a lot of money, sure, you can make a ton of money out of that, but that doesn't happen a lot of times, a lot of the time. And a lot of the time, people lose a lot of money into acquiring toys. And it's not like anybody can get rich immediately just by buying and selling toys. It's, it's, it's a long process, and it's, 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 a, it's a very uncertain process that a lot of collectors go through. And a lot of collectors are still hoping that they, what they have, what they accumulate, will be worth a lot of money sometime in the future, which I personally think is not going to happen 90% of the time. Uh, you get lucky with a few things here and there, but not entirely. So a lot of people think it's, it, it's a waste of money, time, resources, and you won't amount to anything. Okay, uh, having said all of that, I do believe the reasons for that society thinks that way, they're pretty valid, but ma mainly because... They think that way because it comes from a lack of understanding. Uh, it's, it's a childhood hobby. I mean, everybody has a hobby. Like my wife is into bags, shoes, and clothes. I mean, everybody's in, in, into something like cars or video games or uh, maybe people collect houses. Some people collect hot rods or everybody's into something. What I'm trying to say is everybody has a hobby. And it just so happens that for us, it's our, it's our hobby is not... If, if you think it's just toys, then you've not understood the hobby. The hobby is collecting and reliving childhood memories. The, I think that is the essence of toy collecting. It's not so much the idea of just getting a toy, but it's the memories, the emotions that, ca that comes with getting that toy. And that's what we're collecting. It's the childhood memories that we've lost and we're trying to relive and pass on to our loved ones, maybe to the next generation. That's, that's the idea that a lot of society fails to understand. And, well, you can't go out and say and try to educate society and say, hey, I'm collecting toys because you guys don't understand it. I'm trying to educate you. It's a lot about our childhood. We're trying to bring it in. And that's why it's a worthwhile hobby. You can't go out and educate people like that. It's going to be a waste of time. And a lot of people won't accept it. So what can you do? Okay. My advice. Okay. I have, I have a few suggestions. What you can do with this particular hobby so that you don't get too stigmatized or 
too stressed about it, especially during social occasions, is make it a healthy habit. There's several ways to do that. I can think of five ways to do it. It's one is find someone who'll support you, uh, whether it's a group of friends, buddies, or a group. You can join a group where you have the same passions and all that. It always helps if if, if you if you're in a group that shares the same hobby, same passions. It's uh, it's very uplifting. It's very supportive, and it reinforces the fact that you are doing something uh, good. And it's not something shameful. If you have a girlfriend or your wife, try to get them involved in the hobby. Try to get them to understand why you want it. Uh, I married my wife because before we even became an item, uh, we, before she became my girlfriend, she was my best friend. And she 100% supported uh, my toy collecting hobby. Uh, there were not a lot of toys back then in 2003. 2001 2003 that's when we met and uh, we met in graduate school and we were taking our MBAs together and part of my hobby was to go around toy shops she would come with me and we would pick out toys and she tried to understand what it was and apart from being such an incredible woman uh, she understood what made me happy and that to me was the world so find someone who'll support you uh, uh, I'm not saying like you go I'm trying to when you when you're single and you meet someone and you, you immediately ask hey do you like toys can you understand toy collecting I have a hobby of toy collecting are you okay with that I mean you don't normally stick up someone like that and out of the blue just ask it no you, it, it comes with time and normally if a person really loves you he'll love you for who you are for everything about you and he'll understand your hobby. So if, if you find someone who'll support you, then it's a lot more encouraging and it, it becomes a lot more healthy. And just remember, if you're special someone, this is not me trying to give you advice on couples therapy or, or our relationship advice, but if you're with someone and she hates the idea or he hates the idea of you collecting toys, that's not gonna change the longer you have in a relationship. So you'll have to resolve that. Uh, I'm not saying you break up, but it's just something to think about because people don't change when they get married and all that. Very, very, very seldom people change. So think about it. Okay, um, another thing I can suggest is set aside an ample amount of budget for it. Now, this way it's not stressful. This way your significant other will think that this is extra money and you only spend for it if you have extra disposable income, that you are prioritizing the family first. There are expenses like the mortgage, groceries, insurance, the business, loans. There are a lot of things to pay for. And if you prioritize the important financial things in life and you put this one on a separate budget, I'm not saying you put it down at the bottom of the list. If it really makes you happy, make a separate budget for this. And your family, your significant other, whoever is with you, your partner or your friends will understand that you are someone who is responsible and that you've set aside some money and you're into this because you can't afford it. Okay? A third suggestion is don't go crazy about it. Uh, don't make it the end all and be all. Like for some people, it should be an outlet. For some people, it's, it's just a form of entertainment. Don't make it the be-all and end-all of your existence. At the end of the day, it is just a hobby. It's something to get you off, get your mind off of something very stressful or your daily grind. That's just it. Don't get sucked in and too absorbed in it because you're going to lose yourself and you're going to lose everybody you love. Okay? Number four, um, keep it 100% all the time. And I've said this a lot of times. Um, in all my videos and reviews, keep it 100%. That goes with shoes, bags, cars, houses, whatever. If you don't, if you like something only 99% and below, don't get it. Get rid of it, pass on it, or get it on clearance. <laughs> I'm kidding. Make sure you keep only the things that are 100%, and you'll be a lot more happier in the long run. And lastly, Use the hobby as a tool 
for something good or something positive. Don't make it such a negative thing. Like, don't get depressed all the time because you can't get a toy. Or don't get overly stressed out because you're trying to beat people, trying to beat the scalpers, trying to beat everybody to this next door, this this very rare or collectible or whatever. Make it something positive. Let people know that you're enjoying the hobby, that you are becoming a better person because of this hobby, and that it's it's really something good and it's making a positive impact in your life and the way you do things. And I think people are going to come around and understand that this is not such a bad thing if it makes you a more positive person or if it makes you a more a, a better person. All right, folks. So there you go. That's uh, my little discussion uh, for this week. Let me know what you think of this topic. Let me know if you have any experiences that are very similar to mine. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. If it's your first time on this channel, please subscribe. Oh, and, and if you have any suggestions of which topic I should discuss next, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks. So there you go. This has been my little talk discussion about toy collecting being a closet hobby. Thanks for watching.